So in the last couple of days, I discovered that my solar edge inverter is limited to 6,400 watts of produced output. This was a great surprise considering I've had this solar edge inverter for nearly four years. So what we're going to be doing is looking at the evidence which presents itself as being limited to 6,400 watts and how you can find out whether your inverter is also limited as well. We're going to be looking at the settings which are available to installers and seeing whether you can change them yourself and whether they have any impact anyway. We're then going to be looking to establish what the facts are in terms of what you can do about these limitations. So here we have a situation where my car is charging. It can pull seven and a half kilowatts in theory, but it is limited to solar power. But as you can see here, the solar power output is getting above six kilowatts now, 6.7 kilowatts. And when it goes above 6.4 kilowatts, you can see that the surplus is going into the battery. It is not going into the car charger. And this is the problem which I've found with the solar edge inverter. It is limited in terms of AC output to 6.4 kilowatts. Likewise, there can be a situation where you could have three kilowatts of solar power output and there's five kilowatts available in terms of battery uh, power and you can pull seven and a half kilowatts into your car charger and does it pull seven and a half kilowatts from your inverter no it doesn't it imports 1.2 kilowatts from the grid and it only discharges three and a half kilowatts from the battery in that kind of situation as you can see here lots of surplus uh, here eight and a half kilowatts at times and that is going into the battery uh, when those surpluses do exist so the battery is very good for mopping up that surplus, but if you don't have that battery, you're limited to 6.4 kilowatts. What do we have? Let's go on to layout. And this is how you can find out what your inverter is rated to. So you click on that, click on I, scroll down. You can see here the power limit is 1000. You can see here it is an SC8000H and that at first glance sounds like it can provide you with 8000 watts of power. But unfortunately this is misleading and we're going to go into a little bit of detail about how you can find out what the actual power limit is for your inverter. So what we're going to use is another app which is called Setup. This has got two options. It's called commissioning or view only. If you don't have an installer account, you can go onto view only. So we'll scan the QR code on the side of the inverter. We'll set this to P and let go and then tap continue. Here we go. So Wi-Fi now connected. So this is what the installer will see when they are making settings. You can view all of these in a read-only format, even if you don't have an installer account. As you can see, we have got a five kilowatt site limit. That's the, your export limit. But if you scroll down, there is a power limit, 6.4 kilowatts. We want to have a look at that in a bit more detail and understand where that is coming from. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see uh, view power control. So we tap on that. And you can see energy manager. We've got limit control. We've got export limit, which is active. And you can see we've got the five kilowatt export limit. I set this on the communications board when I was commissioning the energy bank battery. But look at the production limit. If we tap that, it says that when export limit control is activated, you should turn it off before activating production limit control. So it sounds like that production limit control is turned off and yet you can see that there is definitely a 6.4 kilowatt limit on the uh, main page. So what I want to do is switch off export limit and then we want to see whether there's anything latent in the production limit settings. 
There is another section to look at. Let's go to Advanced. External production is disabled. We're not too interested in that. Storage control, uh, not particularly interested in that one. Um, if we go to um, other sections in here, um, let's go to power reduction interface, that's disabled. Um, that can limit your production externally, uh, but as you can see there, it, it's switched off. Reactive power uh, can be significant. Uh, that is really an advanced setting. As you can see, we've got a cosine angle of one, so we're assuming zero reactive power control here. Active power here, look at this. You can see the power limit is 100%. And not only that, but the current limit of 56.57 amps. I don't know if that's in terms of AC voltage or DC voltage, it's not clear, but that's way above uh, what the eight kilowatt limit is supposed to be. Eight, eight kilowatts is around about 35-ish amps. So this is no problem at all. So now we're going to go into setup one more time and we're going to log in using commissioning. Same procedure as before. The difference between commissioning and view only is that it tries to download firmware before you can do anything else on commissioning. It's really very annoying when it does that. And if it does download the firmware, I'm gonna be uh, waiting a long time because the battery management firmware takes a long time to update. Solar Edge, uh, the, the inverter firmware takes uh, about 10-ish minutes to, 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 to download. Battery management firmware takes uh, somewhat longer and I have seen it fail in the past. Okay, let's retry this one more time still have issues trying to connect to Wi-Fi on the Solar Edge inverter. Now it's connected. Moment of truth, do we need to download firmware? Last time, about 11 days ago, during battery communication issues, they said my firmware was up to date, so we'll see. When the firmware did fail last time, um, the all of the elements except for one element failed to download. Battery was still communicational. After I uh, exited setup, I did try several attempts to download it. Um, here we are, device ready. Thank goodness. Continue. Let's go to commissioning wizard. Let's see what's going on here. We want to go to the uh, Smart Energy configuration. Let's skip the wizard. Energy manager. Limit control, export limit, we'll edit, we'll turn it off, we'll set it. We're gonna turn it back on again. Okay, so now we'll go back and we go to production limit. Production limit is not active. Let's activate it. No, it, there's no activation limit. So this is strange. So I've switched off the export limit. We'll just go back status. Still a power limit of 6.4 kilowatts. I do not know where this is coming from. So uh, we're just going to disconnect from the device here. Um, I'm satisfied that I've done everything I can to verify that the 6.4 kilowatt limit is, is beyond it's beyond the limits of any installer or system owner to solve. Now, before I went into setup configuration, I did a lot of research into what was going on. We've got this uh, application note for the Solar Edge inverters. As you can see, it's been updated relatively recently. So this describes all the power control options that you have. And as you've seen, in the setup configuration, I have gone through the pertinent options. The active power control here and the energy manager are the two uh, relevant sections which have something to say about it. If we go on to page nine, for example, uh, there was no grid control there, which basically means the national grid does not command your inverter. That's uh, not enabled. The energy manager, um, 
that that's where we went to and also the uh, the active power configuration now there is a specific uh, application note uh, for export limitation as you've seen five kilowatts is the limit on my site that's got nothing to do with the 6.4 limit power production limitation now as you can see here we've got this status page it's described on page 13 and 14 you can see here uh, it's showing an example where the limit says no limit it then further describes the limit as being the inverter maximum output set power set by the smart energy manager now this is one of the things about solar edge they often conflate two different forms of vocabulary we've got here a smart energy manager and yet further up on page i think it's eight they call it the energy manager right there is there a difference between the smart energy manager and the energy manager i don't know but it does confuse people reading this documentation harmonization of vocabulary and keeping to the same vocabulary does make things easier for installers and end users like myself i wish they put some more information in as to what a smart energy manager is and indeed since we're talking about vocabulary here a bit of a rant energy management and power management are two different concepts energy management should be about managing the batteries your store of energy and maybe also arguably your hot water cylinder if you've got one of those as well power management is about instantaneous it's the rate of energy that's what it is so power production from your inverter that's a power management issue not an energy management issue so anyway rant over no solution has manifested itself as of yet so i've had another idea which is to interrogate the inverter using modbus we have this power control protocol for solar edge inverters so what we can do is go to page 12 and what we see here is maximum active power and you can see the value range is fixed it is the inverter rating so what we'll do is interrogate address f304 using our raspberry pi and here i have got it let's just uh, bring it up here you can see here the inverter rating is 6400 watts this is not encouraging You've got an inverter which is apparently rated at 8 kilowatts. This is the SE8000H inverter, and you cannot get 8000 watts out of it. But look at this. We've also got reactive power. So let's look and see what the reactive power is going to be. So to do that, we will change this to F6. we are okay so that's now transferred so then we'll just have a look at what the reactive power maximum is and that's 3840 volt amps so you take the square of this plus the square of that square root it what do we get 7463 volt amps so even the sum of active plus reactive power is still less than the 8000 watt rating so it sounds like this 8000 watts is just all marketing spiel and the actual output of the inverter doesn't match what the marketing says or the data sheet now i just want to point out the data sheet here for the se8000h inverter you can see the rated power output is measured in 8000 volt amps it is not 8000 watts so this is the maximum apparent power not the maximum real power very important to, to note but even so according to the information that we've extracted from the modbus interface um, we're not even achieving 8000 volt amps that's the max active rated power you can change the at maximum uh, rated power you can see here uh, address f30c is a read and write register active power limit is between zero and the maximum active power so uh, you can choose 5,000 watts as your uh, maximum output and it will give you that. But if you choose 8,000 watts uh, as your maximum output, uh, it will not be accepted. It will only be accepted up to the value which is held in address F304. Very disappointing, I'm going to have to say. 
So now we know that 6,400 watts seems to be a hardwired limit for my Solar Edge inverter. I have sent the question away to Solar Edge to support. They might have a better answer than what I have managed to glean off the internet, but so far no answer from them is forthcoming. What I am going to say is that if you don't have a Solar Edge energy bank battery, you're out of luck. 6,400 watts is what you have. If you do have a Solar Edge energy bank battery, then you can use that to your advantage to overcome this limitation. What you need to do is set the battery to charge up with peak solar. That will enable the Solar Edge inverter to produce electricity, as much electricity as it's allowed to produce, which in my instance is 5,000 watts when it's exporting and 6,400 watts when there is no export. All the remaining surplus can go into the Solar Edge Energy Bank battery. And what I have found on a sunny day is that when there is cloud in the vicinity, whilst you're getting direct sunshine, you get a boost in output, which can go up to eight and a half kilowatts. And occasionally I can see nine and a half kilowatts on my meter. So that's it as far as this special video is concerned. There is a 600 mile challenge in my Tesla Model 3, which I'm going to be describing uh, quite soon. I also want to be describing the price of electricity in some more detail. This is a topic I have covered at least once a year. It was quite popular the last couple of years in August, and I'm hoping it will be of interest this year as well. So I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you again very soon.